Are you ready to give me the history on this? Customer, uh, it's not shifting right. No, he bought it this way. Oh, he bought it this way. Bought it was it like running this. and then it just coughed on him and it did this. There was, but what is this? So it coughed, it, it runs, it, it'll start. It starts and runs. Okay, but it won't shift. No. Will they keep doing that it's too? Every once in a while, but I'll still never get calm. I can From see the T codes. Yeah, I see that with the transmission saying lost calm with ECM. Yeah, but it's the same computer. Is it? Yes. Tranny and ECS. Yes. It says so transmission, engine, and body. Okay, so different connectors. Yeah, but okay. if you look at them, there's still there's not a specific power going into the tranny part, I don't think. Okay. You know what I mean? Because they're talking inside. Yeah. So there's not separate what you That's the same module. You actually went through these already, like powers and grounds then? Yeah, but I I gotta redo it because I'm thinking I got a computer issue. You know what I mean? I just I do. And it looks know? like based on the way this looks, transmission, engine, and body, I've not seen one like that. But is that suggesting three separate modules contained in one housing? I would say that because the the uh, engine lost con communication with the tranny and yeah, nice right. Person. It's the same module. You know, that's so, so it's strange. Like so C13. There's a little hyperlink for 13. That's both the U0100 lost column with the ECM PCM and the U0101 lost column with TCM. Both of them say C13, which is what? Clear the DTCs, repeat the self-test. If the DCC is present again, install a new PCM. Shut the front door. There's no tests. It does make sense from a standpoint of we have two modules that are in the same board that aren't talking to each other. So I do understand that from, yeah. from where we are. Yeah. But like... But like, it, <laughs> but what's, but, what's screwed up though is like, you would expect like... Well, yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, because you're getting that code from the computer. Yes. If we had a pure no -com, like from the get-go, yes. you would only see like the cluster. Not there is a specific to. pinpoint test for a no -com with the scan tool. That's not what we have. Yeah. When you repeatedly get these codes, the U100 yeah, and the U101, you're done. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense. I mean, substitute known good component. This is retest. a this is a substitute no, <laughs> known good ECU and retest. We have communication. I can talk. The car does run. We have two modules that aren't talking to each other that are part of the same board. The TCM portion of the PCM does not have separate powers and grounds. If you have both modules setting codes that they can't talk to each other, the fact that you can even acquire those codes means powers and grounds are there. If you were missing powers and grounds, you'd have no comm completely. You wouldn't be talking at all. We would be following this differently. And the fact that the TCM is saying, hey, I can't talk to the PCM when it's not even, ha it doesn't have its own separate power and ground and when we can talk to the pcm at that point in time yeah we're just yeah. done get get us a module so we can get a follow-up i'll do that all right cool that's just one of those days i don't feel like being charismatic and being on camera How are you ever charismatic i mean never but especially not today i just like having one of those days i'm just like <laughs> Everything is everybody. Everybody. So we're back on this Ford, uh, whatever it is, E series E450 diesel with the TCM ECM communication issue. And uh, the question is, did we fix it? And uh, the answer from my brother is, we got communication and those codes are gone. And he thinks it is in first gear, but he hasn't driven it yet because the power steering pump's still upside down and he's got everything apart. So he's putting that together right now. There's really not a whole lot I can show you guys because we didn't show you much other than the no communication stuff. Do you have the old module still? Yeah. I wonder if we could take out a part. Is it epoxied together or? I'll have to look at it. I think so. I think the guys wanted to see the inside of that. Uh, can I turn the key on? Yeah, go for it. You're gonna have an intake air temperature code because I have the map unplugged. Okay. Do I still have a five second window of communication no, or? It's just, I talk to it every time I wanted to. So talk that's, to it. that problem is also fixed then. That that's... was what the main, I think, problem was. Right. It probably start getting hot and then that was it. Right. We had some really smart guys commenting too about the communication chips in the original 
video. So I, I, I definitely would recommend that you guys, um, read some of that. So if you missed that, um, in the original one, we were having issues where we had to read modules initially when we first turned the key on to get communication. And then within five seconds or so, if you tried to do that same test, it would give you no communication. Or what was your five second thing you said watch, to do? Watch, watch. Go to engine. Yep. Okay. Now I'll turn the key on. Yep. Go to codes menu. Yep. Uh, memory codes. You'll probably see them. Only while we hear the fuel pump running Maybe. and everything else. Okay. Now, okay. Now back, back out of here and then go back in and get a data. Now what's funny is just hit drivability. It'll say no calm. But if you get there quickly, I've never seen data yet. How crazy. I've never seen data yet. Now, now if you go, what's funny is if you go to, um, codes now, it might not communicate there now either. See, my brother said that part is also fixed. So we'll just do a code scan of all of them. We couldn't do this before without timing the key cycling. All right, so IAC circuit high because he still has the mass airflow unplugged. We got some fuel level sensor circuit faults, nothing in the transmission. Fuel sender in the instrument cluster, high speed can, bus, low battery. We're at 12 one right now, ABS can. So I don't think he cleared any of these faults. We're gonna do that right now. We're gonna clear. Can I, you didn't clear any of these, right? Can I clear them? Well, you're going to have the fuel level sensor because he probably really does have a bad wire or sending unit back there for that. Okay. And the, uh, I have like an ABS can communication bus. Oh, uh, I didn't clear any of that. Okay. High speed can communicate. That's in the instrument cluster. Some airbag stuff. All right. Let's, let's clear these. Cleared, codes cleared, cleared. We, we were having issues here before where it wasn't clearing them or modules weren't showing up. I'll reread them again. Cool. Yeah, you just got some, um, some airbag faults, which we're not here for or worried about. No codes in the ABS. Instrument cluster, we just have a fuel sender open circuit. Fuel level sensor in the engine computer, those are both related. And then an IAT circuit high because the mass airflow is unplugged. The other thing that we couldn't do before um, is like go to my engine and then read data from the engine. And we'll just pick one. Drivability, just to show you we have engine data. Bam, bam. Just to show you it's live here. Let me pull up the uh, something that you guys can see. APP, let's look at that. APP1, just look at that, this guy up here. Just showing you the live data. We are talking. So good call. Uh, a couple things we can address with you guys. Based on some questions you guys had and comments, um, I, I am in complete agreement with those of you that said, hey, you gotta do power and ground testing. And um, the reason that I didn't is my brother had already done that and I trust my brother. That was the biggest reason that we didn't do it. Um, I know you guys probably would, want, would have wanted to see that, um, but we didn't feel the need to spend more time there. I think anytime you're calling a faulty module, powers, grounds, you also have to consider the five volt reference circuit on in, in certain circumstances and then communication lines. And there's also something that I misspoke on in the first one. And I talked about with my breakout box connected, we saw our communication signals. I had said, well, there's no reason to do um, comm lines, checking them at the module. Uh, and there wasn't because we could randomly talk to it, right? But in general, I just want to clear the air here. And I don't think any of you really caught this part, but just because you have comm lines here at the DLC or on our breakout box does not mean that that module itself has them because there's other modules that talk on the same network. We didn't address that too. But the reason we didn't is we had communication from here to the engine computer. We had communication from here 
to the transmission computer. They're both housed within the same unit and um, we didn't need to check it because of that. Some comments of, well, this is how Ford has done it forever. Um, not in that they're separate modules. You had a PCM that would control the engine computer and transmission, but it was one module, not two separate modules within the same housing that are talking to each other that you could have a code for. You're not going to have a trouble code for a PCM that says, hey, I can't talk to the transmission side of myself. Two different modules. This one's different. This is not typical. And not to mention we have a BCM section in here too. So three separate modules that are all housed within the same housing. So no comm lines to check between the two, right? And that's where our problem was. And you said you got this uh, module from Flagship One. I did. The only reason is because when I talked to when I talked to PJ, I mean he's gonna charge me a couple hundred bucks, right? And then I was he said that it had to have, here, I gotta. So he still got a common program no, this? Or he no, already did? No, no, Flagship One oh, does it. Oh, you know gotcha. I mean? It was like 300 bucks. 300 bucks, Flagship. Let's roll the dice with Flagship. We've had some issues with, yeah, but we've I mean, had good doing, ones, bad ones. But they're doing the same thing that yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah. buy a used one, I'm gonna pay someone to bring it in. You yeah. know what I mean? And I'd rather deal sometimes that way but when i was looking there was he said there was a tear off tag and it was a dpso and i start looking for this computer and for some reason there's like seven of them that could be in this one mm. and all the numbers matched on some of them but <clears throat> but the the dps it was it was a tear off tag anyone that does programming might know what that means you know he's like it's got to be that and i was like well i couldn't find one so I called flagship one and they're like, yeah, we got that module. And I asked them about that and they were just like, no, nah, it's going to work. And I don't know. But, and then they emailed me like late last week, middle of last week and said they had a programming delay maybe because they didn't have, I don't know, but they sourced it program that came in as a DPSO and this doesn't have any security. So I didn't even have to do any key oh, sweet. stuff yeah. and the VIN's in it. Sweet. So 300 bucks, you know what I mean? Sweet. And yeah. I guess they program mileage too for you. I, like you, I, you give them, I give the them cluster? everything. Yeah. Whenever, whatever they're asking for, yeah. you know, now whether the mileage is probably in the cluster on this car, right? So not even recorded in the, think, I think in all the, they wanted was the VIN from me. Right. So, and that isn't always recorded. Like some of the older cars, you're not going to have mileage recorded yeah, in, no. in the other but modules. They call but the that cluster. like a hybrid. Cause that is the body module ish on these ish, cars. Cause we have a body module part of that too. But we got the, we have this one. We got that module for 300 program from flagship one. Yep. And so far, I mean, I have communication. I'm not seeing those same problems, yeah, which when is I great. I tried to move it forward. It actually pulled it okay. before it was like stuck in fifth. Right. Like, like, and we, we don't have anything to show you guys on that front. Um, yeah, I can't drive yeah, that right yeah. yet. Um, I guess one last thing I can talk about with, with you all is, um, this was a question by, by one of you, um, is about the communication lines. Uh, but one of you were mentioning checking comm lines between the engine computer and transmission computer. And I think you missed the fact that there are no external comm lines between those two modules. They're within the same housing. But I think there was a question too about the CAN network on this truck itself. And so I thought, well, maybe we could pull that up and see if we can clarify some things there on that front with stripped chassis i wonder if this is a stripped chassis without stripped chassis very very basic we'll just look at the with stripped chassis one first instrument cluster your pcm and your abs abs is on its own yeah it's just the instrument cluster and pcm are on that on the high speed part, the six and 14, looks like the ABS is on its own on pin seven. That's the DLC to your left. That's the stripped one. And let's go to the not stripped chassis. So ABS test connector, that's weird. With advanced track, PCM, instrument cluster, ABS module, vehicle security module, which this doesn't have. 
restraints control module. There's there's just not a whole lot to this, but they're only showing the the uh, PCM uh, as one right one unit, which you just have two lines going to it, can positive, can negative. So really, to address the question, well, what about checking the comm lines between the ECM and TCM? Guess what? You can't. You can't. It's internal. You can't. On either design that I'm showing here with the out the strip chassis or with the stripped chassis, which I think this one is. Um, I hope that makes sense though to you, to you all on, on checking uh, comm lines and why we didn't. Because we had communication. If you remember, didn't we have communication the whole time with the body module part of it? Yeah, yeah, we could actually go in there and read some accessory stuff. Yes, yeah, sir. and so it's the same CAN lines. So you're going to spend time measuring CAN signals up there at the module when you have communication? The answer is no, like never. Why are you wasting your time or the customer's money in that case? But yeah, man, I think we're done. There's not really much else to show you. Um, my brother said it felt like it was in gear and... You said the customer has the mass airflow in the air I, tube. Honestly, I don't see it. So we don't ha even have that to drive it. And like, I don't really want to drive it. And we didn't show you guys that before. This is good enough of a follow-up. I hope you guys learned something from this one. Um, you know, I don't, I'm trying to look for a closeout here. I don't know that I have one. That's um, all folks. That's all folks. <laughs> no. Um, did we fix it? Yes. Um, and uh, we didn't check powers and grounds because I trusted my brother. And I, I, think I checked the references and the he checked references too. So I, I mean, I trust him. We've he's not. It's not like I'm working with a, a different garage well, that's owner. That's why that I says, called you. I'm like, I got nothing else. I know. Man. I think it needs a computer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I hate. Yes. I hate calling computers. I, I do too. Direct. Yeah. And then finding that information within the flowchart was actually helpful, even though we laughed at it, made yeah. fun of it. And some of you had mentioned, oh, that's horrible of Ford to do that. But you understand hopefully now why that, that, that there are no checks for that. Clear the codes. Do those codes return? Yes, which means what? You have communication. The codes returned. If those codes return, what do you do? Replace the module. It's a legit flowchart. We made fun of it. It's funny. It sucks in this scenario. There's other flowcharts where we've seen that, where it says substitute known good ECU and retest, but that was within an entire flowchart of other checks for some output that wasn't working properly. And you're doing all your checks and you come down to this substitute known good ECU and retest. And you're like, come on, like I have one of those sitting on my shelf that I'm just going to try. Just throw it in real quick. So those were the ones we always made fun of. This particular one, not the same category as that, but yeah, so there's your follow up guys. Hope you liked it. We'll see you next time. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Oh, I heard it shift. There it goes. A warning would have been nice. I didn't know he like, was hey, driving it. Drive it I know. I'm sorry. What's our audio? What audio are we using Just right your now? Mic. Your mic. Is oh, my mic's still on. Okay. We'll just hang tight. We'll catch him when he's coming back, too. Here it comes. It's smoking. Let's get a word from him. Some white smoke. That's some injection stuff I now. I have no mass airflow sensor, so I have no power, but I hit four gears going down the hill. Okay, good. I, can pull out the I, I heard that. That's that's a good thing. Coming up the hill with no mass airflow, I didn't chuck the key off and try to see if it would ignore it. Yeah. But I yeah. have gears. Sweet. Yeah, sweet. All right, like it. Tack wasn't working before either. Sweet. Okay, sweet.